Good morning, good evening, guys and girls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nathaniel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys something that some people have requested, but it's not something by popular demand, but it is going to be how do you pump a fire truck? So I just turned 21 and we have been doing some driving training. So I am permitted to drive all of our apparatuses now, um, which is awesome, very cool. Uh, it relieves a lot of stress on me knowing that since I'm still in school and I do all my college work from home, that during the day if we get a call, I know that we can now drive to the scene and we will have a driver, which is awesome. So with that being said though, if you're going to drive these trucks, you need to know how to pump these trucks. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys today how you pump our engine and our tanker. So I can walk through, I'm going to walk through engine 94, you know, physically doing it in tanker 92, but I'm going to just quickly show you on 93 and our smaller engine 91. Uh, the reason for that being I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long and it's essentially the exact same process. So, and I've been... I've drove that truck a couple times now, but I've never actually pumped it yet. So I don't want to do it by myself, if that makes any sense. We got air, RPM's good. We're just going to pull it out here in the parking lot, outside the bay. sit here beside our rescue truck and though for anybody ask uh, we're not going to be having driving videos that's a big no-no so before I start we're going to get out we're going to place our wheel chalk down there we go safety so to start the pumping process, after you have your wheel chalk put in place here, we're going to go to our pump panel. This has instructions on how to get the truck and pump. Hopefully you guys can see this because you guys are on top of my head. So, we're going to stop the truck. The truck is stopped. We'll shift the truck transmission to neutral, or neutral, so that N stands for. We're going to set the parking brake. Parking brake is set. We're gonna throw, throw the lever down. Give it a second. Throw it down to the very bottom there. You can hear the truck sound change. So now, what we're gonna do is we're going to put the truck in drive. The truck is not actually physically in drive. Well, it's in drive, but it's not gonna go anywhere because we have our parking brake applied. So as you can hear, the truck engine change tones a little bit. So, this is our pump panel. <clears throat> we have, we do not carry foam on any of our trucks besides our tanker, I believe. We have a couple uh, buckets of it, but we, I've never used foam in the last five years of me being here. So, over here we have uh, another outlet to foam settings and a rear steamer to pull water if you want a suction. And that's the valve for it to be put down. So we are going to now open our tank to pump. We're going to crack our tank fill. We're not going to open it all the way. We're going to crack it just enough to let the water kind of circulate and not you know, burn the uh, tank up. So we're going to now prime our tank a little bit. Just enough to where you can hear this water start to swoosh. So, now essentially, you would open whatever outlet someone has pulled. So on every single side, the outlets are named. So, outlet one, two, that's an inlet, that's a suction intake. So then you have your cross lays. Cross lay one is up top, cross lay two is at the bottom. 
we're not going to pull any lines because I'm not going to deal with that. So essentially, you would pull whatever crosslay or whatever outlet you're using, and then you are going to throttle it up. And then now you can watch your throttle on your pressure. You can hear the more I crank it, the higher it's going to go. You usually want that anywhere from 75 to 100 on your hose depending on who's operating it. So, that's just the basics of one on one of pumping. Um, I, last time I did this, I left our engine coolers and our pump cooler on. It's not gonna hurt anything. These are just, uh, that's our generator button. PTO has to be engaged in the truck for it. And these are our scene lights. There's some other additional accessories to the pump panel. So you have a pressure relief here. And I'm gonna not gonna lie to you, I'm not sure what a whole lot of the other stuff is. So, but this is how, if I need to flow water through this truck, this is how we could do it. So, we're gonna shut everything down. We're gonna make sure our throttle's down, throttle all the way down. We're going to turn our tank fill, close it, and then we are going to close our tank to pump. Make sure everything's closed. So now, we are going to return to the cab of the truck. And then, we're going to shift the truck back to neutral. Then we are going to release the lever. And now the truck is ready to be in motion again. So that is how you put this truck into pumping gear. So if we would have opened up an outlet, we would have been flowing water. Easy as that is. So, I'm going to now take you guys to our tanker, which is a little bit different. Okay, so I decided against doing the physical aspect of this, just because of how loud that engine rattling is. I can only imagine what it's gonna be like when I go back to edit these videos. And hopefully you could hear me walking through and explaining how we pump the truck. So, what is different about this truck to the other trucks? The difference is, this truck is a pump and roll. This truck can be in drive and pump at the exact same time, which is awesome because, you know, it's a tanker, it needs to. It needs to be able to move up and down on the port tanks and come and go as it pleases. So, this truck, climb into it. So, what is different about it? You don't have that up and release throttle like the other three engines do. However, this truck has a mode button here on the gear shifter. Once you get the truck to its designated pumping position, you would then hit the mode button. You would, this green light would pop up, and then this green light would pop up shortly after. I want to add that it's this truck also has the capability of releasing all of its water from right here in the center console. It says left dump, right dump. You can pull up to the left side of the truck, and I'll get out and show you where these dump valves are. So you have one right here, and you have one on the other side. This will release out, and you can drain the tank's water into your porter tank. Vice versa on the other side, and also on the rear. Mostly common, uh, you're probably going to be dumping from the rear, uh, just because of how narrow our roads are in the state of West Virginia. Uh, usually you're going to be backing up to the board tank, if you're not connected to a hydrant for your source of water. So after you've hit your mode button, and you are ready to pump this truck, you are then going to release this, twist it, pull it out, and then the tank to pump would be engaged. So, your tank to pump is now ready to rock and roll. You are going to crack your tank refill. Like I said, that kind of gives that recirculation to cool the uh, pump down so it doesn't get burned up. And then you're going to prime your tank to pump. You're, you're gonna prime the pump. <clears throat> so, then after that, 
you are going to know what discharge you're working off of. So this truck is a little bit different compared to the other trucks. It has labels. There's a discharge here and there's a couple on the other side. I'll just walk over here and show you. Sneak peek of our new addition. Almost done, almost done. Coming right along. You have a discharge here and you have your five inch intake. And you have a refill and I think that's it on this. So I guess you only have two, two outlets. Okay. So, the only reason that we know which lever we're going to pull for our discharge, you can see the aluminum is kind of wrapped on that lever. There's only two levers, or two discharges on the tanker. So we can assume that this lever is meant for the passenger side, which is discharge two, outlet two, same thing. So you would pull whatever you want, whichever one you're using, and then you're going to throttle it up. You know, you are pumping the truck now, you are flowing water. So that uh, pretty much sums up pumping this truck. We have cross lay on this truck. We have a uh, inch and quarter. And we have the uh, three inch hose. If we need to set up some blitz or something, we can do so with this truck. So, that's how we pump our tanker. And to you know, disengage the pump, you, know, you throttle it down, shut down your discharge, and just shut everything the way in the order that you open it up with. So, moving to our 91. Like I said, this truck is going to be very similar to the way you pumped the other big engine. This truck <coughs> has the lever to pull down, and you're going to shift the truck in a drive with the engagement there. And you're going to come to your pump panel. You know, pump panel is usually always going to be on your driver's side unless you have a top mount pump. So here you have your tank to pump. You pull that, tank fill, then you would prime. Sometimes, I think it's important that you don't always have to prime. Sometimes, you know, if the truck's been used recently, the truck will still have enough water to pull, you know, without having to prime it. Usually this truck, we always have to prime. <coughs> then you would pull whatever crosswell you're using. This truck has four, I believe. Yeah, discharge four, and then it has two crosswells. Also has a inch booster line, which is cool. So, there's your throttle there. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Um, has your five inch on the other side for your intake and then this is also an intake you can use for your suctioning you need to but you can also use a smaller suction hose which is what we usually do which is why we leave this fitting on this so moving to our last and final big engine if you guys are interested in me showing you guys how to pump our smaller trucks of uh, the two brush trucks, you know, I can show you, but it's nothing really special. All it is is just turning on a pump and flipping the correct lever, and then you got water. So, our 93 is the exact same as 91, 94. You have your lever here. Once the truck stops, pull it down, put the, put the truck in drive up there. Come to your pump panel. This is a top mount pump. So you climb your happy butt up here. Ow, that hurt. Your tank to pump's here. Tank fill. Your primer is here. Then whatever discharge you're using. And then your throttle is a button throttle. So that sums pumping 101 up. There's a lot more that goes into pumping than what people think. There's actually a lot of math that gets used. 
uh, especially when you start pulling multiple hand lines is when stuff can get a little complicated. However, I'm not an expert on that. I can just, I just know how to flow water. I'm not going to sit here and try to lie to you. I'm usually always on the other end of it. So, but that's where a lot of stuff like this, the uh, pressure release start to come into play. Then you got to start realizing, knowing how much water you're flowing from each discharge and knowing what your intakes are and how much water you're putting out per minute, the whole nine yards. So, pumping is not, you know, it's not a complicated game, but it's also not an easy game. So, thank you guys for watching. We're going to end this here. If you guys haven't already, you guys have a Twitch account, go follow my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Nathaniel Texas. There's a link right here. I appreciate the follow. I'm probably not live right now, but who knows when I might be. You know, college student life. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.